Well, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made, and indeed we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today I want us to talk about the mystery of faith. And yes, indeed, faith is mysterious. Because there is no way faith works with human logic. Faith always works with the supernatural. It talks about an instant change of an environment, of a situation. And that is why it's very important that when we practice faith, we do not rely on our own human efforts, but we focus on the supernatural power and abilities of God. And therefore, it is only God who can assist us to be able to function and to work in faith and through faith. The Bible says it is impossible to please God without faith. And therefore, it is very important for us to understand that to please God, we have to work on a day-to-day -day basis in renewing our faith. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible talks about renewing the mind. And that's the only way we can be able to make our minds to be aligned with pleasing God through faith. And it's very important for us to understand that in the supernatural, where faith becomes a mystery on a day-to-day -day basis, there is no middle ground. There is no gray areas where faith is applied. Because where faith is applied, things are either black or white. You always come back with a testimony when you living a life that speaks faith. When you live an expected outcome and you are, exp you, you are seeing a possibility of an encounter, the only way you will be able to get to an expected end is for you to understand that there is no middle ground. And by middle ground, we're saying that there is hope for something, there is a maybe for something, there is perhaps for something. But in the word of God, you either believe that's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Have you asked yourself why other people get healed and other people don't get healed? And more often than once is because we put our faith in situations where we are believing for other people and we pray and we believe God to heal other people. We believe God to give other people work. We believe God to give other people wealth. But we doubt when it's up to us because there's always an element of middle ground. But with God, there is no middle ground. You are either hot or you are cold. You are either a victim or you are a victor. Or you are either blessed or you are cursed. You are either rich or you are poor. But the most important thing for you to understand is that faith has got no middle ground. Faith has got nothing that it puts as a stepping stone for doubt. Because you have to either believe that God is going to do it or you do not believe that he's not going to do it. Therefore, questioning your faith. Because when you believe that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him, there's no way you will not come back with a testimony. Faith cannot go past a question mark. When you come to God, the Bible says that you must believe already that he already has a plan to reward you for demonstrating faith. And therefore, there is no middle class. The systems of the world tell us that there is a possibility things will happen. There is a possibility you are either poor, you are middle class, or you are high class. But in the kingdom of God, you are either rich or poor. There's nothing like middle class. In the kingdom of God, there is no good, better, best. You are either bad or you are either good. And we need to start now renewing our minds with understanding that there are no too many options when we are approaching a platform of faith. The sooner you narrow your options when you come to God, the sooner you will realize that you only need to trust God or you choose not to trust God. Those are the only two options that you have. If there are more than those two options, then already you are starting to show symptoms of doubt and you will not receive what you are believing God for. For the mystery of faith to be manifested, you need to understand three concepts. Firstly, 
that faith is not logical, it is in the supernatural. And therefore, you must expect an outcome that speaks a miracle in your life. You must expect that your help is going to come in a place you never even envisaged. God says, for my plans are not your plans. My thoughts are not your thoughts. While you thinking that your help is going to come from one direction, God can make your help to come from a completely different direction. And that's where you expecting an outcome that will speak a miracle, an outcome that will speak the supernatural. We've read a lot of stories in the Bible where things happened in a way nobody has ever envisaged. We have never seen Jesus Christ use mud to open a blind man's eyes. And in medical understanding, it is impossible to use mud to open someone's eyes. We saw a woman who had an issue of blood literally being healed by just touching the hem of Jesus' garment. That had never been happened. It cannot be medically or scientifically proven that if you touch the hem of someone's garment, you will be healed. And all these are encounters that are showing us that for faith to take place, we have to understand and believe in the supernatural. It is impossible for you to be able to walk in faith and not believe in the miraculous and not believe in the supernatural. So that's the first aspect that we need to establish in our minds. That for faith to take place, no question mark is supposed to be put before faith. No logic is supposed to be put before faith. If you think too much about it, that's where you will start to doubt and that's where you will lose it. If God says to you, stretch your hand and pray for this person who is disabled and you think to say, but I've never prayed for someone who's disabled and I'm, I'm not sure if that person is going to be healed. That already is a sign of doubt. When you hear the word, the first thing you need to do is to run with that word, which ushers us to the second aspect. The second aspect of faith is that faith is instant. In Hebrews chapter 11, the, the first verse that introduces us to the definition of faith, it says, now faith, it starts with those two words, now faith, and I want us to focus on the word, underline the word now, because faith is instant. Faith says things can happen without you having to think twice. So when you receive a word to say, stretch your hand and pray, in that very same moment, it's the nowness of faith. It's an instant opportunity. It's the sudden time that things can actually happen. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray this prayer for instances of today. We are believing God that give us today our daily bread. And that prayer is a prayer of faith. No one can pray the Lord's Prayer without necessarily having faith. Because whether you have money or you don't have money, that prayer says that you are believing God that today is an environment for a sudden change, for you to receive in the supernatural food that you are believing God can provide for you. So faith is very much embedded in us understanding that things can happen instantly. The situation can happen instantly. Things that you have believed God to take a year can happen within a week. Things that could have taken months or years could happen instantly when you have a faith encounter. Because when the supernatural comes, it changes firstly the environment in which you are in and suddenly it gives you an opportunity for you to access things that you could not ordinarily be able to access. And it's very important for us to understand that God expects us to please him. And therefore, he will always set us up in platforms where the supernatural can easily happen. We don't have to wait for a church revival for the supernatural to happen. We don't have to wait for a big crusade for the supernatural to happen. Just waking up is a miracle of faith. It's a miracle of instancy. 
There are people who went to sleep but did not wake up in the morning. But because we have the ability in Christ Jesus to pray and believe for the grace of waking up, that in its own instance is actually saying that we do have faith in God and we will be able to see that. Now the third aspect is that there is no middle ground. And I want to emphasize the aspect that there is no middle ground for faith. You either believe or you do not believe. Jesus Christ kept on going with a message that says only if you believe. Because only if you believe then you will be able to see faith manifested in your life. Our faith is high under normal circumstances when we see other people's lives progress and we believe and we aspire to be like those people. But we're supposed to challenge ourselves to say, can God heal somebody else and not heal me? Can God give someone a job and not give me? Because God is not fair. Is that what we believe? That God is not fair? But faith says that if God can do it for somebody else, he can also do it for myself. And if God can do it for somebody else, I can also pray for other people to receive it as well. When the Red Sea was parted, it was not just only believed for Moses who believed. Rather, it was not only parted for Moses who believed that the Red Sea could be parted, but it was parted for everybody who was around Moses at that time. All the children of Israel went through the passage of the Red Sea. So if a miracle can happen for one person, it can happen for everybody. Jesus Christ went about healing everyone in the towns, in the cities. There is nobody that Jesus Christ prayed for and was not healed. And therefore we need to understand that when we believe in the same faith that Jesus Christ had, whatever we ask for in his name, we can be able to receive. So these are the three most important aspects that I want us to grasp this morning. That firstly, faith cannot go past a question mark. Faith is sudden. Faith works and operates in the supernatural. And when it operates in the supernatural, you leave any doubt, you leave anything that speaks logic, and you leave anything that speaks doubt. And I want to share a testimony where I have personally experienced God in my own personal life. And I want to testify that these events that I've actually personally seen in my own personal life had nothing to do with my own personal capacity, but it's things that God has done because of belief. I remember when we relocated with my family to Pulukwani, we encountered a lot of struggles. And amongst the struggles that we had, we found ourselves not being able to afford the rental for the place where we used to stay. And we had to move. And at the time we were supposed to, to move, I still had not raised money for us to be able to get the deposit and get the rental for where we were going. But I continued to believe God that he has something in store for us. And I found my spirit literally praying even in my sleep. I would be turning, I would be feeling that I'm really literally praying and I'm believing God and I'm quoting the word of God and I'm mentioning to God that is either he comes through for me or we are really going to be in serious um, trouble. And in that space, I remember I received a word that by tomorrow you are going to meet someone who's going to give you the key in your hand. Take that key and occupy that house. Now, it's not just only that a stranger was waiting for me for a key there. I had applied for a house knowing that I did not qualify for that house. But my faith went beyond the question mark to say, will I be able to get in that house? And suddenly, that very same morning, these people called me to come and view this house. And I drove to go and view the house. And when I got there, I liked the house but I did not even have money to move into this house in two days. And this gentleman said to me, okay, so you like the house? I said, yes, I like the house and I'm supposed to move in two days, which is going to be month end. And he said to me, 
can we talk about rental? I said, okay, how much are you charging for this house? And then he thought about it and he said, okay, this is the amount that I'm actually charging, but it's okay, you can negotiate from there, but you also need to pay the deposit. So while I'm still thinking to say, okay, how do I tell this man that I need to move in the next time in two days and I don't have money to pay for my deposit, even for my first rental? He reached out to his hand, he took out the key, he literally took my hand, put it on my hand, and said to me, the house is empty. So you can use the two days to move in, and once you've settled in, call me and let's discuss how you're going to pay me rental. Right there, I'd received my miracle. Right there, something in the supernatural took over. Because when I put on that application, I did not put the application because of what I had in my pocket. But I believed in my heart of hearts that faith cannot walk past any doubt. That I have what God says I have. And when I believed that God is going to give us a home, he was going to give us a home. And more than often, a lot of people get stuck on the how aspect of faith. And a lot of people think that we need to help God of the process of how he's going to bring us into the manifestation of faith. God just wants us to have belief. He wants us to understand that it happens in the supernatural. And in the supernatural, we've got no control, but only God has control. And in that space, you give your all to him to say, you have a plan when I do not have a plan. And in that space, you are saying to God, only you can give me an opportunity to prove that you are able on my behalf. And that became a convenient situation for me to prove the nowness of God. When I decided to say, I don't have money, but I'm going to view that house. I don't have money, but I'm believing God for that house. I don't have money and I don't know where is it going to come from, but I am believing that God has a plan to fund it. And we only stayed for one week. Somebody that had been struggling to pay me for a very long time, within that week, God had activated them to receive their seed and they were able to pay us and I was able to go and pay my rental. And that is how faith works. You don't need to know what God is doing in the background. All you need to do is to believe. I always tell a story of a young man who believed God for a job. And he kept sending his CVs and sending his CVs. And one day, all of a sudden, someone called him and said, you have an open for an, for, for an interview tomorrow. Please come. And he went for the interview and he got a job. But now he had a problem because now he didn't have money for transport to really start the job. And when he was going to work that morning, he was worried that I don't have money. He, he prepared and he was just waiting for someone to call and trying to phone everybody until it was 10 o'clock and nobody was really helping him to actually go to work. And he was sitting there and he was saying to God, but I passed this interview. You know how much I've prayed for this work? But all of a sudden, when an opportunity comes, you are failing me, you are not giving me money, what kind of God are you and all that? And he said, I believed that someone will come and drop me money. I, I had faith. I quoted all sorts of scriptures. But now faith is activated when we act. Faith does not work with what you have in your pocket. Faith works with what you have in your spirit. Had this man just decided to say, I don't know how, but I'm going to the taxi rank. He could have been able to get to work on that day. Because miraculously, at quarter past 10, someone calls him and says, I saw your status on Facebook yesterday. That you posted that you got a job at this place. And I work in the same building. And on that morning, I waited for you at the taxi rank and waited for you and waited for you and you were not coming. 
I ended up only getting to the to the taxi at nine o'clock, which is an hour later than the time I'm supposed to be starting at work. Because you were not coming and I thought I would be able to pay for your ride. And bless you as you go in to start work. Only at that time he realized that he prayed and he believed God, but he did not activate his faith. He had his own ways in which how he's supposed to be starting at work and how he's supposed to be getting in that taxi. Faith cannot go through any stumbling block in your mind. If you do not see it in the spirit, it will not be manifested. You've got to push yourself to get to a place where God says that you have what he says you have. If you are believing God for a job, you go to the company where you are believing God and you continue to knock on that door until an opportunity arises. So the most important thing that I want to leave you with you here is that when God delivered the Israelites, he didn't deliver some of them, he delivered all of them. If you have seen God heal anybody and you are believing God for healing, healing is also for you. If you are, you've seen God provide food and you know you do not have any income whatsoever, you don't need money, don't look at how you're going to do this. The how aspect of faith comes directly from God. Just believe that today you have what you need and God will surely bring it to you. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or imagine. And until you eliminate impossibility in your life, you will not be able to see the manifestations of faith. Narrow your options to believing that God can do it and never doubt that he will fail you in that aspect. And once we start working with a narrowed mind that says that there is no way God will fail himself, Definitely, we will start to see faith manifested in our lives. Today is a good platform and a good opportunity for you to change your life. Your life has an opportunity to be changed and for you to get the things you've always believed God for. It's not, a, it's not dependent on God to bless you. When Christ was on the cross, he said, it is finished. And your situation was already addressed on the cross. And I want to leave you with a thought-provoking scripture that says to you, when, when you call the Son of Man, in Luke chapter 8 verse 18, says when you call the Son of Man, surely he will come speedily to avenge them that call him. But will he find faith on earth? So when we call him without any doubt, Jesus Christ will come. At any instance, Call him instantly, he will come. Instantly. The Bible says, surely he will come. But the challenge is, will he find enough faith in your situation? Do you believe that once you have called him, he will come to your rescue? That God cannot help you with. It is dependent on you to make up your mind to choose to believe God for the things that he had said he will do for your life. A life manifesting abundance of faith is a life that has decided to choose God as the ultimate God and positioning him as the one and only God, the true God, who's got a plan to prosper. And you believe that what he has in store for you will set you apart even for years to come. God loves you. And he's got amazing plans for your life. Continue to believe that he has a plan for you. Continue to trust that whatever you are believing God for, today is the day for a great manifestation. Life on faith is a decision. Narrow your possibilities. Narrow your expectations to a point where you strongly believe that it will only take God and you are choosing to believe him and you will quote his word until you see the manifestation of the mystery of faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. God bless you.